What's up guys, Subzeric here, and it's patch day. Patch 14.2 just dropped in North America this morning, dropped everywhere locally this morning. Uh, and while it wasn't the biggest patch in the world, it's done a lot to shake up the meta. There were a number of changes. It wasn't one of those like end of set patches where they changed like two things and they're out, but it wasn't one of those like early set patches where they change like everything. Uh, the biggest standout to me so far is that Disco went from being one of the strongest comps you can default to, to being a pretty niche setup. It's it's definitely still playable from the right positions. It's not completely unplayable, but it's definitely not something that you say like, okay, I'm going to default to Disco because it looks like it's a good spot for it. Uh, and the other thing that I think is really notable about this patch is that it has given rise to some new reroll comps that didn't really exist last patch. They kind of Completely reworked Kale. She's now a viable reroll comp if you get the right spot for her. Uh, they changed, well, off just straight up, Katarina. Uh, they changed Urgot a, a decent bit, so now he can kind of carry in the country comp a little bit. Uh, and, you know, people before the patch were even playing a little bit of Kaisa. Um, so we're going to see one of those new reroll comps in the game today from Robin Song's POV. Robin hit rank one last night. I don't know if he still has rank one, but I'm going to call him a rank one. Uh, and he is going to call. Riven from this position. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, uh, because I mean, I guess he has like half of an Evan Trout and, and half of some of the stuff that makes sense. Um, but I think very quickly, Robin is going to realize that we just hit a Katarina here. We have a country opener with this uh, this Thomas Kench, which encourages us to play around country uh, units like the Katarina. So this could actually be a Katarina reroll game. Um, if you guys uh, didn't watch my stream yesterday, we watched some egregiously strong Katarina boards. Uh, really just watching a Katarina 3 just solo out almost everything. You know, we watched... There, there was a clip apparently in Frodan's stream, I did not see it, where Katarina defeated like an Ezreal 3 and a Yone 3, I, I think is what, what people were saying. So it is certainly a strong reroll comp on the new patch, and we are going to get to see Robin try it right here. Uh, this is the board that I saw... Uh, on the Oceanic server that people were playing around, and Robin looks like he's angling towards that as well, which is this Superfan Katarina setup. Now, the reason you would go Superfan Katarina, I mean, is one, because it it fits sort of like logically with uh, with Katarina, um, because you can get KDA in with Evelyn and then just get KDA in really easily with the Superfan package, and obviously the Superfan package is really like nice and, and tight and, and fits together really, really well with, you know, the fact that you get Guardian in, if you get Echo in, you get Sentinel, though... I don't know if we actually have room to play Echo on this version. And then, you know, like if you're playing Spell Weavers, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the other nice thing about this is that Katarina's Superfan item is Hodge, uh, which is one of her best items. You you want to go for almost the, uh, if anyone remembers the old school, like Assassin Echo build where you would go JG Hodge Hodge. That's basically what people are going for on Katarina's. And you're going to see Robin pick up that JG right now. This is because... JG allows you to crit and kill backliners. You know, Katarina can actually very easily snipe backliners with her daggers. Uh, so on a unit like Katarina, JG makes a ton of sense. And then once you've made JG, you just start stacking the Hodges. Now, you'll notice that Robin so far has not put items on the Katarina yet. That's because it's a common trap that I think a lot of people fall into, which is itemizing the non-headliner version of a carry when you are trying to play that version. I've seen a million people do it. I think that, like, that, that might be like the, the number one mistake I've seen people make the set, just like easy mistake that you can rectify in your own gameplay, is not itemizing the non-headliner version. So we have a Katarina one. Don't put your items on Katarina one, because what happens once we find headliner Katarina? Then we have to either sell that Katarina one or not have our items on the headliner, both of which are, are horrible options. So you'll see here, he is just almost full open in this setup, just playing a very, very weak version of the board. Um, and just holding on to the units that matter for him, the uh, the super fans, the uh, the uh, the Evelyns and stuff. He's going to end up selling off a few of these extra copies of units uh, just to make thirty. He says at the end of the day, who really cares about like a Kennen two or a uh, a Evelyn two? I'm just going to play for making thirty gold, making my uh, my board later with as much gold as possible. Similar to the last body review from Robin, actually, where you know he's such a beast at prioritizing econ, knowing when to prio econ versus when not to. Um, when you're playing a comp like this. You usually want to hit uh, during stage three. I, when I'm playing a two-cost reel, really want to hit around 3-2 because this comp will fall off like late, late game. Now, Katarina's kind of broken, so she's not going to fall off as much as other two-cost carries would. Uh, but, you know, when you're playing a two-cost carry, obviously that shouldn't be like the most broken unit for the entire game. It should fall off later in the game. Um, so when you're playing around this, you you tend to want to hit sometime during stage three. Boom, that's our Crowd Diver Katarina. 
Uh, and we are off to the races now, and uh, and we can start playing this board. And I'm sure, yeah, you'll see a wall of Pogos in the chat, and I'm sure all of uh, YouTube uh, comments. Are, I'm already, I already hear people typing. Oh, he just, he just high rolled. He just high rolled Katarina, man. I, like, I, oh, I don't high roll Katarina. Oh yeah, but look, he put himself in a spot to play the comp, and he, I mean, yeah, he high rolled. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people high roll, sometimes people lower roll. I, I mean, if he went eighth, I wouldn't have odd reviewed the game. So. Yeah. Uh, in any case, it's going to be interesting to see what his item prio is for the rest of the items. Ooh, interested to see as well what he goes for in this position here. I mean, Cyber Uplink could help Katarina get to those extra casts and they could just spread the rest of these components. I wouldn't imagine we would go something like Curse Crown. It's just not the greatest dogma. Determined Investor could help you get to just a more tanky frontline. We don't really need a Prismatic uh, Pandora's items here. I, I imagine it's just Uplink here, um, but we'll see. I guess the idea with like Freaky Friday would be like you could end up itemizing. Um, you know, like Yone later, but that's just so, so far away. I, I really like this uplink here. It allows us to make usage of these items, which really aren't too, too useful for us. Like this glove is going to have to, all of these items are going to have to end up being either frontline items or items for our other carries. But already you can see Katarina 2, if you look at that damage chart over there, built 8,000 damage with three items. Uh, now, you know, she does have the extra damage from the Idealism and the extra managen from the uh, the Prismatic uh, Cybernetic Uplink, um, but still pretty insane and you're gonna see here a little bit of what i was talking about uh you know stabilizing your board stage three when you play a two cost real comp you have to roll a bit deep uh on uh, on three two and three three and that's exactly what robin's gonna do here she's gonna roll here try to pick up uh echoes and you know try to stabilize this board we need as good a front line as possible the other nice thing is of course because you're rolling on six you have a high chance of picking up katarina's uh so it's it's very easy to just pick up a few extra katarina's and then find the katarina three by the end of the stage best case scenario you're hitting it like really really early on but that is that's if you're like a giga high roller and you already had like katarina or two or something like that uh no opportunity to pick up shred here so we're just gonna go with the glove for potentially tg it looks like uh tg a fantastic item in a spot like this when you know you have the uplink you already want to itemize a lot of different units and tg will allow you to do that i guess the other option is to save it for hodge hodge um i ooh, i mean if you fight what is this person doing they they're actually like full open twin tear like they just sold their entire board for the for the full pivot um, but yeah, you could go with TG. Yeah, he is, he's just going to make TG. I was like, there's no way Robin's not going to make TG. Um, pretty surprising, actually, though. The level 7 here. He knows this is a really, really big spike for Crowd Diver, and he still gets to make 10 gold. Uh, and the other thing is you can still find 2-star or 3-star 2 costs on level 7. The odds only go down 5%. Um, so level 7 versus level 6, like, kind of no diff for your uh, for your 2 costs. But the nice thing is now we can find, you know, a higher chance of finding this, like, Nico 2, a higher chance, of course, of finding, like, more Zeds and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is essentially the board. Um, you just play around Vertical Crowd Diver and uh, and this uh, the Super Fan Opener. And you know, obviously, Crowd Diver version is the best. You could probably take Country version if you have to, and and figure out how to play around that. It, Katarina seems like a unit where she really, really wants the Crowd Diver, and she doesn't really want the Country version because it's gonna be kind of hard to fit Country in on this board. Uh, maybe there's a way to do it. I'm I'm sure someone's already theorizing some way to play her. I mean, you know, you could just play like Vertical Country, but then you lose the the benefit of being able to play super fan but yeah we have a, a pretty strong board the only question now is when is this katarina 3 going to come because we have four katarinas and it's the end of stage three the nice thing is this comp is so strong that we are stable we five streaked here 75 hp uh we do need to find katarina 3 at some point or uh you know we're not gonna be able to cap out too highly we do pick up a one off of the orb here and then another one in chop so our uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> robin a bit excited there uh, because uh, this game is definitely going his way. He also has the remover there. Just gets dropped a full hodge, so we can drop that onto Zed in this situation. Uh, and then the TG is just going to have to go on, I don't know, Evelyn? He's going to put it onto Nico here and then belt you. Yeah. So, yeah, we just we just spread our items uh, once again for the uplink in a spot like this. This is not a comp where you really need items on anyone specific after you get your Katarina items, but Zed can be a solid duo carry. And, uh, and yeah, spreading the items works very, very well in a setup like this, especially on units like Echo, where the cast is so so valuable uh ogma wise here uh, i don't really love any of these maybe it's support cash uh i don't you might not even roll 16 times i mean you could i mean the fawn is a component Ooh, he rolls down and finds heavy hitters which must be great is katarina in the range it looked i did not see if she actually was in the range but she'll definitely be in the range at three star uh the other nice thing is that all your units are getting extra hp from uh yeah i see even nico that was nico one was in the range it looked like 1700 hp is that right um because we're getting extra HP from Cybernetic Uplink. So Heavy Hitter's really, really good with almost every single reroll comp because a three-star unit's going to have a lot of HP, convert that HP into AD and AP, and uh, you're, doing, you're doing very good. You are doing very good. Uh, the max comp cap for this comp 
is going to end up, of course, being the sixth crowd diver, just uh, on either level nine, or we could potentially get out of this echo, though we'll lose a lot of frontline. Curious to see how Robin plays around at later game. He's actually rolling kind of deep here. I'm, I'm actually surprised that Robin dips so low here to look for upgrades when we're really pretty far off. We're nowhere near Echo 3. We're pretty far off Katarina 3. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised by this roll here, actually. I wonder why he rolled like that. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, you have to buy the Katarina, and yeah, the Yone does not matter too much, and the Evelyn 3. I mean, we already have Evelyn 2. I don't know why we're even holding extra Evelyns. Um, but yeah, I'm a bit surprised that he even wanted to dip that low, but maybe the idea is just that he wants to spike. He, he is on an insane win streak, so if he can continue that streak, he'll be very happy. Uh, we can look for Zed items here. We can look for frontline items here. Uh, what did he see? We're not out yet, but we get another tier. Ooh, it's tier and it's Echo. I like that a lot because, I mean, another Hodge, if we get to something like a Kiana, would be fantastic. Uh, the other thing is just that, you know, it's another Echo. We're uh, we're two off Echo 3, and Echo 3 is going to be a huge, huge tank for this comp. It means that we're never going to be able to get out of the Echo. Uh, there is Static Shiv as an idea, and yeah, he's just going to make it here. I almost forgot about that uh, that bow that's just sitting on our bench. Or not on our bench, but on this cannon who's sitting on the back line. But this board doesn't, of course... The, the board naturally has healing reduction in the way that Katarina has healing reduction. Um, but it doesn't have any form of natural shred. Uh, you know, the only way you get that is if you get like a Zigzin, which is never going to happen. So building shred is really, really nice. Uh, holy... Look, I will not say that this game is not a high roll. Uh, I feel like uh, he... He just hit an insane number of Katarinas, but what I will say is this is a fun game to see what Katarina reroll can do from a high roll position. Uh, you know, we're, we're fighting another board, which is honestly in a pretty high roll spot as well. Already has Vex 3, already has Karthus 2. Not sure how they hit all this stuff, but yeah, we're going to lose to this board because, I mean, they're just Vex 3 pretty early. Uh, I mean, stage end of stage 4 is definitely like about average, but, you know, Vex 3, Karthus 2, they've, they've hit everything as well. And yeah, we end up losing that fight. Partially because our positioning is so bad versus Vex, right? We're super, super clumped for the Zed. Uh, you know, we, we would need to change the Zed positioning to ever beat that comp, but I think Robin just didn't have the time to uh, to see what their board was doing. So, fair enough. Uh, rest of these items, I don't know. This could be something like an Edge of Night onto the Zed and then spread components. Um, it's definitely what I would look for here. Yeah, I like this a lot. And we just chill for a couple of... Maybe just for one round, actually, in level here. Um, it is kind of awkward. Like, what do you put in? Oh, he's uh, he's looking at the... He's looking at the stats of the comps, actually, and, and yapping about how he's probably saying, like, I'm not even a high roll. They have a more broken comp than me, which, like, I mean, fair. But look at this Katarian damage, by the way. Cast, boom, 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 boom. 9.2k damage in an instant, really. It feels like it took no time at all for her to do that much damage. Um, I assume we're going to level here just because it's pretty cheap to level in a spell like this. And you just play a second echo. Um, or how, is, is he looking at rolling here? Yeah, I, I wouldn't really want to roll in a, a spot like this, but yeah, you just play double echo for now. Uh, the question is, do you go fast nine or do you look for this echo three? Because uh, nine is what really spikes you right with that six crowd diver, but echo three is also a pretty big spike. Uh, I assume he'll just econ up and then make the decision. If he naturals one more echo, then that the decision is really easy, right? You just roll for echo three. If you don't natural any echoes, then the decision becomes a little bit harder and you actually have to think for yourself. I really want him to take this Evelyn out of the the team builder like i have started like finally enlightened myself and I, i'm like taking the units out of the team builder as i hit them and it just like cleans my brain up a little bit but he's got all these eves still in the team builder so it keeps highlighting them it's really tilting me but all good uh he's looking at potentially moving the header into the middle but that would be it'd be really awkward for the the zed positioning because he'd have to walk really really far but you can see this edge Katarina positioning, what she can do. Yeah, just look at that dagger that flies all the way to the back line. Uh, if there aren't a ton of units clumped over on the edge next to Katarina, she can easily, easily, easily access back line. Uh, I would assume... Yappin? Oh, okay. No, I would assume we just go for another Zed item here. Renan's is great. QSS is great. Probably QSS. Um, okay, he's going he's gonna to go for the Renan's. I, th I think it's pretty close, and, you know, he was thinking about it for a while. I was thinking QSS for this uh, this matchup that we have against the... Um, the uh the vex board because that that might be our worst matchup but renown's is a very strong item on zed so obviously both are, are very very solid uh and yeah like the heavy hitters is also really really good value onto the zed he's got a lot of hp with the cybernetic uplink and uh just being two starred yeah look at this katarina she's gonna ult and she has to get through the front line first right but now like she potentially potentially one more cast can start getting the back line okay this time she just went through the entire front line and still just killed everything like it, it's not like it's not like she even had to assassinate backline there, but you know, there are there are times when she can ac access backline. That just wasn't one of them, I guess, because all the front lines sort of ended up clumping up towards the Katarina. But you know, if like they're clumped up towards the other side, Katarina can easily snipe and uh, 
She has, uh, but like uh, the thing is she doesn't even need to snipe because she does so much damage. Obviously against this board, there's going to be no sniping, but we are just going to one-shot this Yor. Boom, boom, boom. And just one-shot all the rest of these units. They do have a lot of units in. This is another comp that I think uh, is absolutely broken on the patch. Like, uh, did not need buffs and got buffed was this Ezreal Zed comp where you play Heartsteel and you just play for max cap, cap around Jazz late game. That comp did not need to be buffed whatsoever. It was already one of the better comps, and it just got buffed in that Ezreal got buffed. So that's another comp that I think is definitely on my radar for stuff that's a little bit too uh, strong. All right, we pick up a duplicator here. So now we are just one off Echo. Um, but it looks like Robin has the idea, like, I can just go 9 in a spot like this uh, and still hit the Echo 3 on 9. Uh, looks like he's looking at Edge of Night, interestingly enough. Yeah, he's going to Edge of Night there. I was thinking maybe Warmogs for the uh, for the Echo. It gives you more stats with uh, the uh, the Augment that we have here that, that gives you AD and AP. I mean, the AD doesn't really matter, but the AP is kind of nice. Uh, and also, I don't really care that much about itemizing Yone, but I guess the idea is that once we get a uh, 6 Crowd Darvin, he's actually going to do a lot here. Uh, we also got a Radiant Blessing here, which is something that I didn't touch on at all, but we are in the Radiant Blessing galaxy, so that's uh, that's something that exists. Yeah, Lowey can just be a decent extra unit in here. We got the 5 Crowd Darvin, we're just... We're in Kiana waiting, waiting room. Uh, yeah, I kind of completely forgot about this, to be honest, that we were in Radiant Blessing Galaxy, but it's really nice for Robin, right? Four components uh, means that it's going to be very easy for him to spread all of his components onto all of these other units uh, and get, you know, insane uplink value. He's actually itemizing the Yone, and he could even potentially hit Yone 3 if we hit, like, a big clump of Yones at some point, though. It's a little far off. He's holding MFs, which is interesting as well. Yeah, I think he gives up on them at that. Oh, he's always oh, going to get Jazz in. Wow, this is, this is a really cool variation where he says, you know, I, I haven't hit the six crowd ever. I can just play Jazz as my max cap. I have seven synergies in. Jazz is really, really nice to get in this late. Wow, that's a that's a really cool uh, final version of the board where you actually end up playing around Jazz here. And I mean, this is a really, really close fight. I think the Jazz might have actually won it for him. Um, wow, that, that's really, that's a, that's a cool idea. There is a Kiana on Carousel. I have to imagine we are going to still go for that and want to play around the six crowd diver as our real, real, real max cap and then we can move these items over to kiana yeah he's just gonna get back in a six crowd over but it's nice i mean it's, stuff like that goes to show why why robin is such a good player and how you know playing good D tft can reduce your variance where he doesn't actually hit the kiana a lot of people at that point would throw up their hands and say oh i missed i low rolled the, the game sucks but robin says well there's a different version of the board that i could actually play i could actually play this uh this jazz version and it spikes him and he potentially wins that fight because that and might you know, it might end up winning him the entire game if he wins this matchup because, you know, the other person being alive, maybe they get stronger and they end up beating him. And yeah, that is going to be a dub for Robin on this Katarina reroll comp. I'll pause at the end so you can see the uh, final board. But yeah, really, really, really cool board. Uh, cool, uh, cool high roll for Robin, but also some cool flexible gameplay near the end and also showing off how to play a really, really strong new reroll comp. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe, check my Twitch and all my other links down below. Thanks for watching.